Hello, my name is Christopher Metzger and I'm here to talk to you about the supraglottic airway skill. I will begin by ensuring I have on the appropriate BSI. In this case, I will be using gloves and safety glasses. I will now manually open the airway and ensure the mouth and oropharynx do not require suctioning. I now elevate the tongue and insert a simple adjunct. This could be an oral or nasal pharyngeal airway. Once I'm sure the patient has accepted the airway adjunct, I will ventilate the patient with a bag valve mask. When I'm sure ventilations are being performed without difficulty, I will attach the BVM to oxygen and set the flow rate to 12 to 15 liters per minute. I will now ventilate the patient at a rate of 10 to 12 breaths per minute. While I'm ventilating, I will have my assistant check for equal chest rise and fall and bilateral breath sounds. After talking with medical control, I have been given permission to insert a supraglottic airway. To accomplish this, I direct my assistant to take over ventilations and I ask them to pre-oxygenate the patient. I will check and prepare the airway device. To do this, I ensure the packaging has no rips or tears, the bulbs inflate properly and hold air. I then lubricate the distal tip of the device. When I am ready to insert the airway and I am confident the patient has been well oxygenated, I instruct my assistant to remove the airway adjunct and move to the side. I properly position the head and perform a tongue jaw lift. I insert the device to the proper depth and inflate the cuffs with the proper volumes of air using the supplied syringes. Once the cuffs are inflated, I immediately remove the syringe to ensure the cuffs do not deflate. I now take the BVM from my assistant and attach it to the end of the airway. I ventilate the patient with enough volume to see chest rise. I confirm placement of the airway by auscultation over the epigastrum and the presence of bilateral lung sounds. If you are using a commutube, tube, you need to be certain you are ventilating through the correct tube. If you do not see rise and fall of the chest and only hear sounds over the epigastrum, you will need to ventilate through the second lumen. In this case, I do not hear lung sounds and there is no rise and fall of the chest, so I remove the BVM from the first lumen and attach it to the second lumen. I now confirm placement by observing chest rise and auscultating lung sounds bilaterally with no sounds noted over the epigastrum. Now that I have confirmed placement, I will secure the device and continue care for the patient. The placement of a supraglottic airway is an important method of maintaining proper airway management and ventilations. Thank you for watching, good luck, and stay safe.